I have a really cool request today. This is going to be interesting. This is kind of a, in a way, a donation to bring, bring joy to all of our lives. This is a 15 minute session and I'm going to read the goals here. You guys don't, don't even know. You guys don't even know yet. Okay. There has been so much focus on the negative things in the world these days. I think we need a little distraction. I was wondering if you could look at the past when dinosaurs walked the earth. Anything you come up with will be great. Isn't that awesome? Okay. We need a distraction from all the negativity. That's true. Hmm. And you feel called to have me explore the past with dinosaurs when dinosaurs walked the earth. Any messages? I'm just getting in the vibe of this because it's such a surreal and unique request. Thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you and to explore this as a gift to everybody. All right, to get us out of the negativity. Okay. First thing that comes to me is that dinosaurs were very psychic animals. <laughs> and they don't like to be defined as animals. They were sentient beings like uh, like dolphins in a way. But they're telling me that all animals are sentient beings. <sighs> they feel like we evaluate them as prehistoric animals. They were sentient beings. They were psychic sentient beings. They were like a race of humans, but they were in the form of dinosaurs. There seems to be some misunderstanding as to... <sighs> these sentient beings. It keeps saying that. The echo is continually... Um, flowing that we are misunderstanding them. Okay, I'm going to take a moment because I'm absorbing information right now. And this is a bit surreal, but somehow there's still a timeline where the dinosaurs are still on Earth. And they never left. They're still on Earth. But they're saying that that timeline where the dinosaurs are still on Earth still exists right now. In our version of reality, there are still dinosaurs on Earth. Sentient dinosaur beings on Earth. And that not all of the dinosaurs were wiped out like we believe. In a way... Us believing that they were wiped out is, in a, is a gift in a way to helping us to evolve our race. And as we evolve into more sentient beings, <laughs> are we not sentient beings? I mean, they're showing me a sentient being is unconditionally loving, is aligned with their higher self, is psychically aware, is tuned into all dimensions and connected with nature and the universal love and we aren't we are discovering that we are evolving they were evolved but they say that they're still evolving as well but they they don't like to to say that they are evolved as though they've stopped evolving because that's not true they are still evolving and they're aware of us. They show me unbelievable things. Um, an overlay. So that there's different versions of Earth and there's overlays of these different versions of Earth. And they, in a way, are the invisible space in between us. 
So where you would look at the night sky, you would see stars and then you would see the black in between the stars that there's so much in that black. There's so much more in that black than you could possibly imagine. They are in the spaces in between. And that there's overlays of earth and we aren't aware of all the overlays. And they're in the spaces in between. And they live in a total... Okay, let me slow down for a moment. They're showing me something else here. Okay, this is ev this is a bit complicated. So I'm supposed to tell you that I am communicating with the dinosaurs of the past. These dinosaurs that never were wiped out, um, they continued um, on their own timeline and they still are here today with us. They're extremely benevolent beings, extremely benevolent beings. And they can't interfere with our own development. It's not appropriate at this time. But they're very, they're highly advanced, technologically advanced. They seem to know how to move in between what is a visible, where we would visibly see them and then not see them at all. I mean, this is a heart-centered conversation. This isn't a mind conversation. This isn't about ego. This is a this is like communicating with a dolphin, and it's like communicating with a Pleiadian. Um, it's like communicating with a um, a very wise, benevolent um, collective consciousness. It feels uh, as though they're learning a great deal by sharing the earth with us. Because it, it challenges them in different ways. Where we feel like we're imprisoned, they also feel that they, they could feel that experience for themselves as though they aren't set free either. But they, they don't, they just choose patience with it. It's, it but it, it, it seems quite natural. Okay, they're showing me more of the friction of what they're going through. And they're showing me that the illusionary walls have to come down. Because they can't continue to live in hiding and we can't continue to hide from each other or play games and secrets. It all has to break down so that the truth can be our evolution. Because we're not, we're not evolving, um, we're not raising our vibration by continuing to live in the veil. Um, we have to start to see. And we have to start to see what is in between. So not just looking at the stars, but actually seeing what is in between the stars is just as important as the stars. They are somehow involved um, in our development, though, too. Because they sh there, there's an image of a, a man who's wearing a lab coat, and he's got a... And he looks like a, a dinosaur, like a velociraptor. <laughs> and he's standing, and um, he's working some kind of technological device, and he's showing me that he is flipping all the switches, and it is turning off. And we are slowly becoming desensitized to certain frequency patterns that aren't going to be there anymore. We are going to start to see each other. And we may even begin to see what was always here, which was the dinosaurs. <laughs> this one has a lot of um, has humor. I don't know if I want, if I should take him seriously, <laughs> but he shows me a cartoon, and in the cartoon, um, the Velociraptor um, is doing medical experiments on apes, and then the apes are turning into actual baby humans, um, and then is holding the baby human, and then is showing me a mother. Um, reptilian that looks like a velo like Velociraptor from Jurassic Park is breastfeeding um, the baby human and then allowing the baby human now to grow up in um, nature 
and um, he's male, but he's he's a bit funny because um, he's showing me a Christian person looking <laughs> at this, and their mind goes like, "This is the devil. This is evil." That we were created by evil. Was it really, were the velociraptors evil or were they angelic? And the, the very idea, the very idea, babies being breastfed by lizards, the very idea. He, he shows me himself then paralleling with a, like a, a businessman with a big cigar who's overweight on a chair. And he looks like he's about to roll off the chair um, by looking at this cartoon image. Um, and he, he, he's one of the rulers of the world, okay? Um, it feels a bit like 1950s. Um, not being exposed to certain uh, ideas because of this Christian um, overlay. Uh, it, it's sort of like white supremacy. It's um, the white man. It's uh, the concept of diversity is, in, is, is not appropriate yet. Diversity to the point that lizards now are breastfeeding human babies. The very idea is what is he's expressing this message. He seems a bit of a like a, like he eats a lot, <laughs> like it's a fat lizard I'm talking to, um, who has a silly personality. But he he feels like we're all family. And he doesn't see that as bad. He doesn't. He sees that as love. Sees that as nurture. The baby doesn't look at the lizard mother um, and see gross. The adult sees gross because the adult doesn't know how to conceive of this, because it hasn't been um, revealed or shown to the adult at a young age in order to adapt to that idea. So it is hard. It is a friction. But the baby doesn't, isn't seeing the friction. The baby is receiving the nurture. And that's what the baby needs for fulfillment and love. And, and to grow up as a benevolent adult. It's a matter if it's a lizard mother or a human mother. He shows me this uh, fat lizard. <laughs> he shows me... Um, he's very psychic and he's... <sighs> He is a, he's wise, but he also likes children a lot. And he likes um, telling stories, creating, uh, engaging stories that are creative in the mind. And um, that impact the heart, impact emotionally, um, people emotionally. And, um, and it creates a memory that will never be forgotten. And he hopes that the story of the baby being breastfed by the lizard mother um, will not be forgotten by you, but will be perceived um, with love and not as a blasphemous idea. But he, he, he feels a bit emotional because um, I'm shown again the image of turning the switches off and what is like a weird sound, a frequency sound is uh, diminishing. It's getting softer and softer. It's being removed. Um, and we are being more exposed to each other, which is then more exposed to ourselves. Um, and it's very, very hard because it's almost like um, <sighs> panic. He shows me um, a street where people are screaming like um, chickens with their head cut off and they're just running around like uh, balls in a pinball machine. Um, it's over exaggerated, but people are running like they're lost their minds, crazy screaming. And now we're burning down buildings. We're, we're screaming about the, um, everything that's wrong with the world today. And he continues to show me that the sound of this frequency overlay that has been, um, kind of, um, it has created, uh, what is sense and sensibility. Um, sense and sensibility frequency overlay is um, being turned off. And now we're being given um, the taste of ourselves, our true selves. But he knows that this is for our own good. 
that this is good for us. I mean, again, the dinosaurs never left. And they're still here. And we're having a hard time seeing them. I don't pick up on anything manipulative other than um, I'm confused as to, let's just say, hypo hypothetically, um, he's actually saying directly that the lizards created the human race and then shared the planet with us. Um, but as our parental um, figure, this is just, a, he's not necessarily saying yes or no to this. The energies aren't saying yes or no to this. It's just sharing this idea with us. Um, is now seeing over time, because it, and that's what is being shown to me, that certain um, patterns of energy that have kept us separate from each other are being removed so that we will be more exposed to all the races of beings that are secretly here with us, that have always been here with us. But if, to start doing that, we have to start being exposed to our true selves which then creates chaos because we haven't actually known ourselves. We've been living with sense and sensibility, which is a uh, self manipulation. It's ego, it's control, it's power. It's, um, it's the dark side of ourselves. It's self imprisonment that is polished up pretty and looks good. I ask him, I mean, it straight up feels as though they have technology that has helped them to hide from us, but that they're not going to hide from us anymore. And so that technology has also kind of had a, a role with our own development and has kind of kept us in this, um, this state, which has been really hard for us to overcome it. Um, but it doesn't feel like that is appropriate anymore. It feels like this has to stop. And they have to be exposed to us. And we have to see them. We have to learn how to share the planet with beings that we wouldn't even believe we're, we're here. Everything feels very uh, quiet right now, and there's a bit of a sadness um, lingering in my stomach, in my throat, in my third eye, in the back of my mind. It just feels like a very long time of hardship for both races. And remember, this, this journey that I'm doing here um, is tapping into the frequency consciousness that I am called to access and share with all of you today. There's always so many sides of a kaleidoscope of awareness and perspective. I have come across so much awareness along the way. I wasn't anticipating dinosaurs. Um, as in like reptilian race, I wasn't um, anticipating um, I would be tapping into that. But I, I'm, I'm really glad that I did. I'm really glad that this type of message is coming forward. I've, I, have, I have come across to reptilians in outer space that were not very nice. But also I find that that behavior is actually challenging us to, to become stronger, but to understand the love inside ourselves and what we are truly capable of. This is the first time I've come across, I guess maybe not the first time, but one of few times that I've come across um, a scene where I'm shown um, the race of reptilians that lives here with us actually had some participation um, in a frequency pattern that would make it hard for us to see that they were here. Um, but they were doing that in order to 
um, help us grow in our own way on earth and help them just to have their own experience behind the scenes. But it's not working for them, it's not working for us, and it has to be taken down. So this is part of a transformation for a lot more than just the human race. It's for their race as well. Um, so there's just so much more, so many more angles going on with the with planet Earth and alien beings. These are not, these are like um, terrestrial beings. <laughs> these are like um, Earth beings in a way. I'm sure they came from somewhere. And in a way, we're all star beings. We're all from the universe. Everything is created from the universe. And that doesn't make us alien at all. It makes us all a part of each other. Which brings up the image again of the baby being breastfed by the reptilian mother. Is that an ugly thing or is that nurture? Is that caring? Hmm. All right. This was super cool. And um, thank you so much for this request. Thank you all for watching. Um, share your thoughts in the comments. If any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at Abby Normal's Wisdom Quest, and I have two other YouTube channels. One of them is Abby Normal, and the other is Zodiac Energy Reading. So come check me out at these other YouTube channels. Okay, thank you all again, and have a very amazing day.